Vanetta Clarks maybe it leaves them with a little less room and you're probably not going to use them with an HMA after Vanetta Clark's HMA failure. So I kind of feel like they're falling by the wayside a little bit. Yeah. So it's a bit of a bit of a paradox, right? On on when to use. Right. Because you know there's promising, but once you kind of have Vanetta Clarks, you don't in, in HMAs, then that's your resilient population once they respond and adding an IDHR may be too late, but it's also unjustified to add an expensive drug on too early, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, very helpful. So, so what I want to show you next, um, doctor is a, a concept a profile. Um, it's really just a few sentences because again, as I mentioned, the drugs in early development. And the goal here is actually before I do that, sorry, I got a little ahead of myself. Um, we'll get to that in just a moment. What I wanted to ask you, and you touched on some of this is, you know, if you, if we jump on the phone five years from now, five to 10 years from now, where do we think would be different? Right. So structurally about some of those treatment flows we talked about, or, you know, are there some buckets or slots? You know, if we've got, um, HMA in there today, it's the same patient population, but now we're going to look, look at Ben plus HMA or margarilumab or CD47 plus HMA. What, what, what do you think is going to be the big differences five years from now structurally or, or types of therapies that are being used? Um, or even, well, even even the thing we talked about at the beginning, the typing of patients and risk factors. Yes, I, well, I hope um, some of the drugs we just talked about in that last slide will be approved. Yeah. And, uh, I think the days of using HMA alone for intermediate high risk and uh, intermediate high risk uh, MDS will be gone. I don't think we're going to be using HMAs alone unless a patient can't tolerate anything else. Um, right. So that's one thing. I think there will be more triplets, you know, like CD47 plus HMA plus venetoclax, for example. Um, I'm hope, you know, people are really want to see a cellular therapy like a CAR T, TCR, some kind of cell therapy approach that will work for myeloid malignancies. You know, there's a lot of ongoing work on that right now. NK cell therapy, CAR T cell, something like that. Um, one other kind of um, thing that people are really interested in is we are now able we are now detect, able to detect in theory MDS bef even at early stages of diagnosis even pre MDS mm -hmm. and so there are thoughts around could we be treating that you know so basically like prevention of MDS prevention of AML um, that's something that's like it's still, it's far away, but I mean, it's, it's something that people are discussing now. I mean, if you could sequence the blood of everyone at age 40, you could, in theory, identify people that, you know, are going to get MDS before they get it, you know, and maybe you could intervene in some way. Um, yeah. so those things are out there. Um, those are the kind of, I think the biggest things. Okay. Um, and then I, I skipped over number two. You were talking about the triplet therapies. What was the one that you felt was most was most likely? Was that the IDH one, or was that something else? Oh no, then HMA forty seven. HMA forty seven. Okay. Okay. So those look like the the, the big list. Yeah. Ones. So I didn't see um, some of the other AML sort of usual suspects in there, right? So I didn't see flip three. I didn't see. We talked about our prey in the TPC3 already a little bit. Um, I didn't see, gosh, what else is some of the, some of the biologics, although you alluded to it a little bit in the bigger bucket of immunotherapy, you know, the, the, the biospecifics and such, right? Are, are any of those you think, um, either amenable or, or anywhere near prime time for, for MDS or is that a totally different ball of wax? Yeah. I mean, a lot of those things either aren't panning out so well in AML right now as it is or, um, or not as common in MDS, like flip three mutations, you know, just not that common in MDS. Gotcha. Um, so even if they're effective, you know, it's only going to be 5% of patients that could benefit, for example. And as a flip, I, I'm actually unfamiliar with the flip three inhibitor data in MDS. I haven't really, I've been following it. Is it not panning out, not terribly convincing, just not being studied? Um, yeah, I'm not sure that there, I mean, it's rare, so I don't, it's, you know, 
who wants to do a clinical trial 